we're saying to be considered far away from the middle, our sample information has to be more than 2.045 standard deviations to the right. So let's mark that right in there. Let's say this is this is our this is our boundary line right there. Okay? We're going to calculate our test statistic from our from our sample and if it's oh, I better zoom back out, huh? If we're inside here, if we're inside this this critical value of 2.045, that means we're, we're close to the middle and it seems okay. If our sample value is clear out here to the right, then we know it has a very low probability of occurring and that it occurred, so that means that something's wrong, namely that the, the middle really isn't at zero. Let's continue. Our next step then is to calculate the test statistic from the sample information. The sample information that we need to plug in here is as follows. We use the variance, which is just the, the standard deviation squared from the sample. It's going to be the standard deviation from the first one squared over the sample size of the first sample plus the standard deviation of the second one squared, which is the variance, divided by the sample size of the second one. Now that's my denominator and it notice it's all inside a square root symbol, radical sign. Let's take a look at the top here. What this top is saying, again, what we're calculating is kind of like a z-score, although technically it's a, a t-value. We're saying take our sample information, subtract from it what we're assuming to be true, get tells me how far away I am from the middle, but we're dividing by this formula, which is the standard deviation, so that this difference is going to be measured in standard deviations. This is really no different than calculating a z-score. Remember, to calculate a z-score, you take your x-value, subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation. That's technically exactly what we're doing here. It's nice to point out here that if we're assuming that the mu sub 1, the mean of the first population, is technically practically the same as the mean of the second population, then this difference ought to be this ought to be zero. So if we're subtracting zero, and this will be true every time, then really all this really amounts to this whole numerator is simply going to be x sub one bar minus x sub two bar. That's really all we really need on top. Okay, all right, so let's go through. Let's fill in the values that we've got here. Let's fill this out and then we'll actually plug our values in into this formula to make the calculation. Let me zoom back out. All right, first thing we're asked for is the mean of the first sample, and that was 47.0. Okay, the mean of the second one is 43.9, and so the difference of these two, 47, I don't know if that's readable or not, but that's all right, 47 minus 43.9, and that is 3.1, and it's in years, by the way, in case you're wondering, it's still years, okay? So we're saying the difference between the two, the two sample groups was 3.1 years, that's all we're saying, okay? All right, we said my uh, standard deviation from the first one was 7.2 years. The variance then would be 7.2 squared, which is 51.84. The standard deviation of the second sample was 5.9 years, and that squared, 5.9 squared, is... I get 34.81. Okay, with sample size, we know that. The sample size of the first one was 23. My sample size of my second one is 30. Okay, I've got filled out everything we need. Now we need to stick these values in the formula. I've got it nice and big here, so let's, let's plug them in. Okay, we know this is a zero. That right side we said is irrelevant. Okay, so the left side of the numerator is simply the difference of the two sample means, which we have calculated to be 
my first denom my first fraction in the denominator is going to be the variance of the first one we have, which we have calculated to be 51.84 divided by my sample size of 23 plus the variance of the second one which we have calculated to be 34.81 divided by the sample size of 30. Now luckily we don't have to get a common denominator and add these together. We'll just let the calculator do all that work. Okay? In fact, I can enter this information just exactly the way it is without anything funny. Don't have to add parenthesis or anything. Let's see if we can make this readable. So I'm going to enter 3.1 divided by the square root of these two fractions. 51.84 divided by 23 plus, and again, don't need any premise or anything here, 34.81 divided by 30. Close my parenthesis for my square root, press equals, and I get a value of 1.677 and we'll call that seven, three decimal places. Okay? All right, that's my test statistic. That is the value I get from my sample data, and we need to put this on the picture here. Where is 1.6777? The big question is, is it to the left of my boundary line of 2.045, or is it to the right? Well, hopefully it's pretty clear to you that this value of 1.6777 is going to be like over here someplace. 1.6777. So, is this test statistic far from the center? No, it isn't. Not not if this is my not if this is my boundary line. That's not far enough. So the answer is no. It isn't far away. Okay. So let's let's wrap this up. Finally, we can say. Since our test statistic of 1.6777 is to the left, and by the left, to the left, I mean it is, it is close to zero, since this is a right tail test, is to the left of 2.045, we have not rejected the null hypothesis. In order to have rejected it, we would have had to have been to the right of that, that boundary marker. Okay, since we're not, we have not rejected it. So, here's our final statement that we can make. There is not sufficient evidence to support this claim. There is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that the non-promoted employees were significantly Older. I'm going to drop it at that, but you know it means they were not significantly older than those who were, were promoted. And hopefully this makes sense. In any case, this ends our example of testing means from two independent samples from populations.